What is going on guys and welcome to CSS Grid and CSS Flexbox mini project. So in this mini project we're going to use a CSS Grid and CSS Flexbox in order to get this kind of look, right? And obviously the final look would be not with these silly colors over here, right? But actually if we would have a images, right, in all these boxes and obviously over here we can have like this was the most basic effect, right? We just had a hover effect over here, right, with the opacity, but you can obviously add tens of things that would happen differently, right? However, the plan over here was to actually stick with the mini project, right, and to make it less confusing also, right, in the beginning, we just stick with colors over here, right? So this would be CSS grid, however, if you go over here, you can see that this is going to be actually flexbox, right? So now you can see that these are going to be display flex. So let's go to text editor and let's start working. And now that we are in our text editors, let's start working on our mini project. So the first thing that I'm going to do is actually create a HTML. I'm going to say this is going to be basic HTML skeleton. Or here we're going to say this is going to be CSS, uh, let's say grid and flexbox mini project. So let's just say project or your project. And then over here we'll need a link. Right, because we have a main CSS, so I'm going to link it, and over here I'm going to say main CSS, and over here in the body, we would want to have a setup. So here I'm going to say very simply, I'm going to say that this would be a div with a class of container, container. Then over here within this container, we're going to have a divs, right? So this is going to be again div with a class of item, and then with a class of item. And this is going to be the number for the div over here like this. And then within this over here item, we're actually going to have an item. And we're going to say that this is going to be the number. All right. So this over here is going to be, let's say, over here like this. We actually need to write it like this. We're going to say this is going to be item. And over here, this is going to, again, going to be a number. Right. So this is going to be item something. And over here, what we're going to do is we're actually going to do it like this. We're going to have a parentheses. And over here, we're going to multiply this, right? And obviously, right now, we're using Emmet over here. And once we press the tab, now you can see what we have, right? We have a item and item 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 till 10, right? And over here, this is the same setup. So now that we're done with this, let's actually go to main CSS and let's actually start styling. The first thing that we're going to do for all the elements, we're going to say padding 0 over here and margin 0. So margin padding 0. Now that we have margin and padding zero, let's actually go and start working over here with our display grid. So I'm going to say first container class over here like this, and I'm going to say display, and we're going to say grid over here. Now it's displayed as a grid, and then, and then I'm going to say height 100 u, u heights. All right, so now it's going to be 100 u heights, and you can see that how all of them moved. And then after that, we would want grid template columns and grid template rows. So over here, grid template columns where's the template columns first and here we're going to say repeat over here five and i'm going to say over here five and this is going to be one fraction and let me just write both of them and then we're going to go over what's happening right and over here we're going to say grid template and we're going to say rows and again we're going to say repeat over here and we're going to say four this time and one fraction Right. So let's go back over here to our setup and let's see. Right. So where we're we getting first of all the columns. You can see over here this is one column, second column, third column over here, fourth column, and over here fifth column. Right. And with the rows it's the same thing. So first row, second row, third row, fourth row. Now obviously you can do your setup however you would want. Right. This is not set in stone. It's just something that I over here uh, decided to do. Right. So this is really up to you how you would want your grid to look like, right? And the fractions is what I'm saying is I would want it to this to be distributed equally. Now over here you can see that item 9, let's say, is using two columns. But it doesn't still mean that they're not equal. They're all equal, it's just this is occupying more place. Now this, for example, is actually, actually occupying both the rows and the columns, right? Two of them. But th that's the whole point for the fractions. That's why we're adding these fractions because then they're distributed equally. Now, after that, we would actually want to work with grid template areas. 
So I'm going to say grid over here, and we're going to say template, and we're going to say areas, right? And let's just leave this one for now blank, right, over here. And let's maybe go and actually work with an items first, because maybe then we're going to understand a little bit better. So I'm going to say item over here, item over here, and I'm going to say one. And over here, I'm going to say background color, and we're going to say red over here like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say that this is going to be grid area. And we're going to say that this is going to be grid area of one over here, right? And now you can see that it's actually disappeared, right? And what we need to do is we need to do this for all of them, right? And this is going to be very simple where actual number is going to match the class that we're going to create. So let's say for num item number two, what we're going to do, we're going to change this one to number two. We're going to change the color. We're going to change the color. In this case, this is going to be blue over here. And then over here, we're going to say this is going to be grid area number two. Now, I haven't named them. So pretty much what's going to happen, all of them are going to disappear. But don't worry about it. We're going to get them back. Right? They're not going anywhere. So here we'll say number three. This is going to be green. Over here, right? Grid area. Let's say that this is going to be three. Over here. And then after that, we're going to have a item four. This is going to be yellow. So item four. This is going to be yellow. And then this is not going to be grid one. This is actually going to be four. So again, they're really matching. There's not really, there's, this is not some kind of secret that I'm doing, right? So it's not item number four, then it's going to be four. And unfortunately, we need to assign values for all of them, right? If we want to do that kind of setup. So for the five, we're going to use a aqua over here. And now we have still five to go. So this is going to be six. This is going to be seven. This is going to be over here, eight. This is going to be nine. And then we're going to copy and paste the last one to get 10. So we're going to copy and paste this over here. And this is going to be 10. And now we can start backwards, right? Where we have a 10. And over here, we're going to say that grid area is also going to be 10. And this guy is going to be dark, some kind of color. Again, it doesn't really matter what kind of colors you're choosing, right? Because for one of them, we're going to use the actual image. This is going to be nine over here. And then we're going to have a coral, coral color. Then we're going to have for item eight, we're going to have a color of corn over here like this. Then over here, this is going to be also eight over here. And then we're going to have for seven and six. For seven, we're going to have a chocolate color, chocolate. And this is going to be seven. Right? So again, they're matching over here. And the last one is going to be for the six. And the sixth one is going to be this color. And the actual grid area is going to be six. And as you can see that we're not using vendor prefixes, right? So this would be one of the things that obviously we would need to use, but I just want to make it a little bit less complicated without them, right? So therefore, we're not using vendor prefixes. Now over here, now we actually need to assign the values, right? Because we have assigned all the classes to their values. So we're going to start very simply over here. We're going to start with the first row. Because once we're working over here with these grid template areas, right, you can see that we're actually working with the row. So row by row by row. So the first row, I would want one grid area number one to have two columns. So I write over here one and one. Then I'll have two, right, so grid area two to have one column. But I'm just dealing with the first row, right? Then I'm going to have three and three, right? And the point is over here that I need, this obviously need to match, right? So we need all of them. So if we have one, one, two, three, three, right? So obviously this should be equal to eventually five, right? Now that we have this over here, we can just save this and we can keep on moving. So now we have one, one, two, three, three. Then the next line, right? Again, we need to have a quotation marks and then over here one one so again we're creating the second row right four five five and again only thing we're doing over here is just assigning the values right there's really no secret over here right you just you just pick whatever kind of layout you would want right and the only thing is you after that insert the values now again you can write over here grid area first and then assign it to something right but I just thought that this would be a little bit easier to see. And then we have six, we have seven, 
7, right? So this again takes two columns. Then this is going to be 5, 5. And as you can see over here, what I had is that this guy actually has two columns, right? And the two rows. And the same as this guy, right? So that's the only thing we need to do. And the last thing, let's create our last row. This is going to be 6 over here, 8 and 9, 9 over here, and 10 over here like this. And here we go. And now we have it. Now, what I would want to do is over here change this guy, right? First of all, let's add the picture over here, right? So just so we can see that this actually can happen, right? I'm not making this up over here, right? So what I'm going to say over here that first of all, we were going to delete the background. And we're going to say over here URL, all right? So once we have the URL, we're going to say masonry over here like this. And then we're going to add some things, right? So first, what we're going to say is background size. I'm going to say background size. Uh, where is the size? Over here. And we're going to say cover. Then we're going to say that this is going to be background repeat, no repeat. Background over here, repeat, no repeat. And then over here, we're going to have a gr uh, grid area, right? And grid area is going to stay one, right? So this is going to be pretty much for the background, right? I'm just showing you that we can actually can do that. Now, one more thing maybe that I would want to do is actually I would want to change the little things around here, right? So here we're going to say color, and we're going to say color white. This is going to be for the text. Font size, let's say something along the lines, I don't know, if like let's say 60, right? So 60 pixels over here, right? And you can see that now it's going to be 60 pixels. And then the last thing, let's say over here that we would want a linear gradient. So linear gradient. And over here, we're going to say RGBA 0, 0, 0, 0, 3. And over here, RGBA 0, 0, 0, 3. Right. So what we're saying is create a dark overlay and don't forget to place a comma over here. Right. So now you can see that the text actually stands out more. And then once we place this dark overlay over here, right? And now let's do one thing. Let's actually change this. You can see that once we're actually going to the smaller screen, it doesn't look as, as good, right? You can see that everything is squashed. So let's change this around. Let's actually add a media query over here like this. We're going to say that this is going to be screen over here, media. Then we're going to say screen over here. And, and over here, we're going to say min. Over here, column, I'm sorry, like this, width, width, over here, 576 pixels, over here like this. And what we're going to do is actually we're going to copy this guy, right? Everything that we wrote over here, we're going to say like this. We're going to copy this one. Or you know what, let's cut it better. Cut it. And now what we're going to do, we're going to place it inside, right? So once we save this, right, you can see that now we technically have nothing in there. It's because... We're working with mobile first, and what's happening is we want to start with a small screen. We want to set up the small screen first, and then once you can see that actual screen gets bigger, now we actually have our setup, right? So it hasn't disappeared. Don't worry about it, right? It's just we are working with mobile first. So let's go back to this screen, and let's actually see how we can work with this guy. So the first thing what I would want to do over here, actually I'm going to say again that this is going to be container container right again this is going to be the parent element and over here i'm going to say display and i'm going to say instead of grid i'm going to say flex now that we have this over here i'm going to say flex direction column right so now they're all in a column and once we're done setting up our container with the flex direction of column we're going to go over here and we're going to say first of all that with an item right so now we would want to target this item so we're going to go back over here. You can see this is the class that we're targeting. And over here, we're going to say item. And over here, we're going to say like this, right? We're going to say that we would want flex because this is a child, right, of display flex. And over here, we're going to say this is 0, 0. And let's say over here, we're going to set it to like 300 pixels, right? So this is going to be set value. And then the actual item itself, we're going to say display. We're going to say flex. Then we're going to have a justify content center, right? So we'll be placing everything in the center. So what we're saying is that not only this is a child of the flex container of the parent, we can actually make him a parent, right? And over here, we're going to say align items. 
and over here center right so what's happening is now everything is in the center over here also right so over here what the last thing that we would actually need to do is we're going to go back over here and you know what let's let's have it over here a little bit more let's say font size again let's say 60 pixels then the color let's make it white right so just so it looks better and text and let's say transform and let's say uppercase over here like this and then after that let's have for the item let's say two in this case right let's say that this would be a background color of let's say what red here like this and then for the item three let's say green and for the four this is going to be blue so three green and this guy is going to be blue so item number four is going to be blue and over here last thing let's place again the image over here so i'm going to say item number one and background 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 and url and this is going to be image masonry image and then after that we're going to say background repeat and we're going to say no repeat background color uh background repeat background repeat no repeat then we're going to have a background size size and we're going to say cover over here and then after that we're going to have background position and this is going to be center so background position and we're going to say center over here right and obviously we can use we can move it however we would want right so we're just arbitrary cho choosing this center so let's save this once the screen gets bigger now we get our grid right with all these items and everything right and obviously if the, if it's you can see that it's not fitting then it's actually going to start adjusting right but if it does have enough space obviously this is going to look like this right so again we can make it bigger right and then it's going to look nicer or if we go to the smaller screen this is what we're going to get right so this is how we could use actually css grid and css flexbox in our workflow